Hello, everyone. I'm Lori Hamill, and I'll be your moderator tonight. We are so excited to have the wonderful casting team here from this episode and from the series, The Americans. Please welcome Rory Bergman and Dana Katz. Wow, that was a very mesmerizing opening to season six, the final season of The Americans. And I'm curious, what made you decide to choose this episode, 601? I think, I <laughs> <laughs> yeah? On? Can you hear? No. Oh, yeah, I think it is. OK, yeah. well, uh, I, I think what we love about this episode is that it really sets up the whole final season and introduces probably 90% of really? the actors that uh, appear in the final season of the show. Um, and it's just so beautiful with the those long montages and <laughs> epic music. And uh, when we were going back trying to think about which episode we, we like loved the most, this one just felt like a nice one to harken back to. Mm -hmm. Well, you were saying, too, earlier uh, when we were talking about that this one took a lot longer than some of the episodes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, usually our first episode of the season, because each season kind of is has its own narrative thrust, um, and so we would, uh, kind of going in, be establishing a lot of new characters at the beginning of each season. Mm -hmm. um, so the first episode of every season tended to be much kind of a bigger undertaking. Um, so we would get into it a lot earlier to have the time to really find all the new actors, often a lot of new major Russian roles. Um, and this episode in particular, mm -hmm. I, I don't even know how many people are I mean, in We had like it's 25 deal memos. It yeah, was <laughs> I, was gonna, I, like, I don't know if you haven't watched the whole season, I, I think of the 50 non-speaking roles that seem to be non-speaking in this episode, you know, 40 of them become major <laughs> characters that you're following over the rest of the mm -hmm, season. Right. So uh, it, it took time to be able to find them all and establish them all. And yeah. And can you talk a little bit about your process for that, for someone coming in, where they're going to be, hopefully, characters that are going to have more um, more lines, more opportunity to be telling the story, but they're starting out in a very strong way in those uh, musical montages that you were talking about. Um, but talk a little bit about the casting process for you with that, bringing yeah. those actors in. I mean, sure. yeah, what we like to do is we'll kind of preface that this is going to be a recurring role throughout the season mm -hmm. so that they yeah. know when they're coming in that it will be returning. We're, we're lucky yeah. with this show that we, there's a lot of foresight in the storytelling, and so very rarely were we completely surprised that somebody was going to come back. Right. Um, we would usually have the gift of having, you know, scripts for the first few episodes, outlines for most of the season or a lot of the season going in. So it, we knew while it was non-speaking now, it would come back in a larger capacity later in the season. That sometimes meant that we had material we could pull, that we would have people audition with scenes from episode six, even though mm -hmm. we knew they were going to be non-speaking in one through four. Right. Um, sometimes we didn't, and we would write fake sides yeah. for them <laughs> if needed. Um, that was like one of our favorite we perks were, of the we, job. We were also, we were also <laughs> writers. We would yeah, send them off to the writers' the room, and they'd be like, what is this? <laughs> like, you guys. What was the one, that one, th it was like my greatest joy, that episode that I had to write. Like, oh, gosh, I can't remember. It was like with the bats. And I made. I oh, wrote this whole uh, scene yes, that was like this the, vampire the sort of scene <laughs> the because we were bugs. the biggest mm -hmm. thing with the fake sides is always masking like whatever yeah. the actual mm -hmm. story is and which characters are going to appear well, we in that storyline. Too. It's <laughs> yeah. fun. Uh, so our side job as uh, writer's <laughs> assistants. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And how about, um, I'm so curious when you have someone that's, I mean, I don't know if you speak Russian, but um, all right. So how do you deal with that in the audition process, knowing that someone is not just making something up? Yeah. Uh, it was a, it's a multifaceted process, mm -hmm. I think, in the way we would kind of protect against that. Mm -hmm. um, the first is that often 
the actors because of the t turnaround of when we would get material and be able to pass it on to the actors, they would have to do some of the translating themselves sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, everything got vetted yeah, all the way up someone. to the highest level of you know our uh, KGB consultants on the show and, mm -hmm. and the people that were doing the translating for us would be sent the tapes once we had our selects. Oh. So we always had that sort of threat in our back pocket of like, don't mess around, you will not make it to air. <laughs> yeah. Like, it'll be bad for everybody mm -hmm. if a tape gets through and it's not, I mean, down to, we would get feedback from our, our um, dialect, you know, from our Russian consultants saying, well, That's he's like he's speaking thing. Russian, but with a Bulgarian accent, and that wouldn't make sense for this character, mm -hmm. so that actor's out. So um, authenticity is pretty the authenticity was, I mean, important. obviously without speaking the language myself, yeah. I can only say what I, it seems to me that we, had a very high bar, and I have to leave it to the Russian viewers of the show to uh, confirm or deny. <laughs> and we may have had some of them <laughs> here tonight. Yeah. Um, so you're looking at also when people are coming in for a show like this, it's also a period piece since it's set in the 1980s. Since this is a room full of actors, could you talk to us a little bit about preparation? Now, uh, now a tone for the show, people would have, kn you know, you know when a show has been running. But what you have here is a show where uh, it is a period piece. Um, could you talk a little bit about how to sort of tip your hat toward that, or is that important as an actor coming in? Totally. I think it it was. I mean, uh, you know, I think it always served people well if they did just that little bit of wardrobe attention, mm -hmm. you know, to be smart about their choices. I will say we ran into a, a challenge with uh, our male actors on the show yeah. because uh, the shaved head is not period appropriate for oh, the 80s. There you go, yeah. Um, and a lot of gentlemen, when they start losing a little bit of their hair, like to sh shave it all back, and it made our, our wig department crazy because uh, it, there, at a certain point, it, there's just a more limited, you know, we would be like, please just grow your hair, and then, yeah. then we can use you. Um, uh -huh. Did anyone grow the hair uh, for we you? Had oh, a, we had, we had a, a, yeah, mm, one of impressive. Last, last season, yeah. yeah, one of our Russians. Uh -huh. we, Went ahead and grew it. We asked him to, to grow some hair yeah, in. He had auditioned lovely. a few times with his shaved head, and it hadn't gone well for him, and we were like, just grow the, grow the hair. Uh -huh. And then we <laughs> got a part, so. Oh, that's <laughs> fabulous. And how about getting into the tone of a show? Well, how, what, what have you seen work when someone comes into the room? Um, now, obviously, with something that's running six seasons, you have an opportunity to watch one or two episodes, or, you know, as, but yeah. when you're starting with something new, so anyway, I would just love to yeah. hear from the well, casting and I will point say, of view. Even knowing that the show had been running, it, it seems so obvious that the best thing you can do for yourself is watch to that. watch a little bit of the show. But mm -hmm. we would say it all the time when people would ask, like, you know, are there any notes for you know coming in? And we'd say, just do yourself a favor and watch t ten minutes of the show. It will tell you everything you need to know yeah. Less about <laughs> the tone of this show, yeah. partic mm -hmm. in particular, because especially when we're working with sides that are not always the real material, it, you can read, if you didn't know what you were coming in for, you could think it could be Law & Order, it could be you know, any number of, of shows, Madam Secretary talking about, you know, or, but our show exists tonally in such a different place than those mm -hmm. shows that it, the most important thing was to know the background of, of Just what the show feels yourself, like. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and when, I mean, on a first season show, if you're coming in and that's not possible, then I think it's doing the research that you can in terms of who are the creators of this show, what, you know, who are the writers, what are some clues as to what, where the show might exist um, based on the cast that's in place and, and the creatives involved in it, the network that it's on, all of those things. Yeah. Um, and then don't be afraid to ask questions mm -hmm. when you get there. Mm -hmm. um, and trust, you know, c certainly often people would come in and, and do the, you know, the bigger version of the scene, the one that was kind of like grabbing at the meat of, you know. The drama. Yeah, the drama that on tonally for our show, you just kind of like, let go of all of that yeah. and just kind of kept it as simple and just throw mm -hmm. away as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so it was always kind of working towards that with, with actors in the room. 
Um, can you talk a little bit about your process of an ongoing television show, like what that looks like for you uh, in the cycle of creating each new episode? Because there's obviously you have a plan for what you're going to do, how much prep time you need to get something ready, um, you know, before they shoot. Can you just talk a little bit about that for us, about your process? Sure. I mean, if it's luckily. Like she said, we were lucky enough to get um, outlines for the season. So if it was a pretty big roll down the line, we might start well in advance. But um, for maybe some of the day players, we only have you know eight days to get that prepared. And we get the breakdown out to agents and managers, and we have our auditions. And We tended you know. not to do very many callbacks once the show got running. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of like an in, a one and done, come in for us. We do the tapes with the actors and then send them off. and, and the actors would get cast from that. We would do callbacks with bigger so recurring bigger roles ones, or yeah. roles that had real emotional beats that the director or the you know showrunners wanted to be in the room to, mm -hmm. to really get a better sense. Um, but it was often f a fast process and on you know the day-to-day -day stuff. Mm -hmm. How did you first get involved with the show? Uh, I came onto the show season two, so mm -hmm. I, I can't take credit for the incredible you know, series regular cast that was established by um, Cammie Patton and, and Julie Tucker and Ross Meyerson. Um, they kind of built the world, and then I came in season two. Um, I had done a, a project, a film with Amblin, and when the Americans was looking um, to kind of make some changes going into season two, uh, they, Leslie Feldman at Amblin had really advocated for me to, with Joe and Joel to um, get me in a room with them, and I met them, and. I'm sure they were a little baffled by me. Um, <laughs> How so? I, you know, I I think, I mean, I'd never done a TV show. Uh -huh. Most of my career to that point had been in film, mostly in other people's offices. Um, and so it was a leap of faith that, you know, they brought me on to, to kind of hold up this thing that they were building mm -hmm. on my own. Um, but I'm ever grateful to them for it. Yeah, well you yeah. carried it two through six. And um, I'm, I want to mention too that you're both nominated with uh, for the Ardios Awards for casting for a television drama and that's coming up in January. If only we could vote. But congratulations. I mean, that, that is really exciting. Uh, it, it's really wonderful. Um, I was wondering, um, what was, uh, like, say, for instance, uh, in this episode, we see a lot of really interesting characters, the people that the travel agency, the, even the line dancing, which is so much fun. Mm, that was so fun. Um, for this, that was, like, everybody's favorite dance yeah. set of, like, we got, the we whole got series. Selfies, we got yeah. everything. How uh, was, was there a role that was in this particular episode that was difficult for you to cast? Yeah, the um, the naval officer was a, a little bit challenging mm -hmm. um, because th we needed something so specific there. It was trying to kind of thread a, a couple of very different needles in terms of what we needed from the character um, because he needed to be working class and you needed to feel that you know kid that had come out of high school and gone straight into the military. We wanted him to feel appealing in a way that you know. Uh, under other circumstances, you might have seen him going on a date with Paige, um, but at the same time, he needed to pose a threat um, mm -hmm. when he asks for her, you know, for her information, and and then walks away with that information. And then you wanted to feel bad when he gets killed by Elizabeth, but not like that bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was it was a really a hard taller, role. Yeah. yeah. Um, we had, but it was fun. Those auditions were really, really fun, bad. and those actors didn't. We didn't show them that they were going to die in their reads. Oh, so they okay. kind of, never knew. Yeah, they, <laughs> they didn't know they didn't until know their they, fate. yeah. <laughs> and and um, I'm just wondering too. Then how did you prepare the actors before they came in to let them know that they're? I mean, was it because of the way the sides were written that they would know this person? Like you're saying, it's like this edge of we like this person, but at the same time they're a little bit intimidating. 
they're going to die in the event. But I mean, like, so how did you, how would you prepare an what actor you, for that? What was interesting was most of the guys that came in, their initial instinct was like, oh, this guy's like a dick. Yeah. Because he, you know, he asks for her ID and he takes yeah. it and he's like kind of skeezy about it. And really schmoozing. She's kind of schmoozing yeah. And, yeah. and like very entitled from our 2018 perspective. But in 1987, you know, I think that was the thing that we kept having to, they would do it and they'd be really like, kind of laying on the, like, I'm going to keep this for later, yeah, you know, heavy, kind of vibe. Heavy and, and flirt. Yeah. yeah, and like kind of seeming seedy. Yeah. Um, and so then we'd be like, okay, so let's throw, throw that yeah. out of your head and just, you know, be a good guy. Yeah. And, and do it, the scene coming from that perspective of like, maybe the, this particular is not the best place, like, and time and place to be hitting on a cute girl, but don't be creepy. About it. Yeah. <laughs> was basically like, be less creepy, right. was the note. Right. Um, <laughs> and then, it, you know, that helped to kind of, because then it was about, like, what's nice about Evan is that Evan is, he's, kind of, he's built, so he's naturally intimidating just in the way he physically looks. Mm -hmm. um, so that did the, enough of the work of the imposing threat right. without him having to also play any sort of menace on top of it. Then he mm -hmm. could just be a guy looking to pick up a girl, yeah. and he seemed problematic enough by virtue of the fact that he's in a naval uniform. He's coming from a place of authority, mm -hmm. and, you know, and also for yeah. us as the oh go ahead no no yeah well it's for us as the audience wondering oh my goodness when he first appears What's is he on? in on this too you know right. I mean is he somebody who it's not just uh, I mean you, you kind of wonder too why does he even uh, decide to I guess because she's pretty so that's why he yeah. pursues it right. Yeah. But I mean, he, it, it's really interesting because there, uh, there's a lot of tension in all of it because yeah. we don't want our cover to be blown. Right. So all of those things that we end up seeing in the episode, but interesting that you, you know, that's what you're creating, that seed, what you're finding in that audition, in that actor, so that they can bring that as some choices and options yeah. to the scene itself. And, I mean, other guys that we saw, there were all different types of guys that, mm -hmm. you know, of, of all different sorts, different ages, everything that we had seen for that role. And it, mm -hmm. it Evan was the guy that really, Nailed you know, it. hit all of the things that we needed hmm. for the role. That's really interesting. Yeah. I love that. We have a couple of questions. Um, thank you for uh, uh, sending your questions down. Um, this is for both of you. Uh, what are some of the best qualities you look for in actors and actresses? Let's see. Um, I'm always like interested in unique. That, that kind of intangible, unique essence that somebody brings, whether it's mm -hmm. to a particular role or then the choices they bring to it, or just who they are walking in into the room. Mm -hmm. um, it's always exciting when it's somebody that is going to do something with a role that nobody else is going to do in whatever way that is. Mm -hmm. um, that was exactly actually what I was going to say, but it, that's because it, I, tra that's cause I <laughs> trained you. <laughs> I've learned from the best. No, but <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, I think it's it's just a natural essence too. I think that just makes you forget everything else that you're there for. It's like bringing it there, melting into that role, really, mm, yeah. which I think very is very nice. Yeah. So, like, bring your unique ideas and who you are. Don't be afraid of that. Of mm -hmm. or or how you would like to create the the character to bring in your choices. Yeah, it, there's no. I mean, obviously, you don't want. There's no need to be working against the text. But mm -hmm. what's exciting to us is somebody that comes in and has a a very clear vision for what that role can be, mm -hmm. um, because it it does some of the work for us. You know right. mm -hmm. it, that. It, and gives us something to, it's always easier to redirect from a strong choice than it is when something's kind of too neutral and then you're mm -hmm. trying to, then like I, I hate to feel like I'm like, okay, trying to give all the characteristics or facets that to go on top of it, mm -hmm. I'd rather somebody come in with something very clear and then, then it's much easier to say like, okay, let's do it again, but over here or lose this piece of it and, and focus on this trait that you were, you know, mm -hmm. or this choice that you were making. That's great. Yeah. It's very helpful. Uh, another question here from Danielle. Anyone who wants to, oh, for either of you, uh, with the rise of social media and the availability of so much self-made content, has the method of discovering new talent changed? I think 
So, yeah. I mean, I think that it's provided uh, personal agency in a new way for mm -hmm. actors, so that you're not left feeling like, oh, when will I be discovered sitting here waiting? Um, th that it allows you to make your own work and put it out there in a way that can actually be seen, right. um, more than just doing, you know, theater. Not that, I mean, people should be doing theater. Mm -hmm. Still do theater. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think everybody has a can point to a viral video or something that has piqued their interest. Um, for the Americans specifically, it wasn't, that you one, know, yeah. a forum that a we were going yeah. to often to look for mm -hmm. talent. Um, but on some of our other projects, it's come up more. Um, but like little web series, like yeah, that can really help. I think. I think anything that gives actors the opportunity to keep to s working, wor working and, mm -hmm. and doing mm -hmm. what they're, they're passionate about mm -hmm. is great. And if it is something that we can look at and can be, we can, I always say like when I'm going through submissions um, on like breakdowns, if there's a reel, I'll always pull up. If the face kind of piques my interest mm. and there's a reel there, I will always pull that up and look and see because the picture tells me some amount of something, mm -hmm. but looking at material right. tells me something else entirely. And I don't care what the material is. I don't care if it's a short film, if it's a student film, if it's a web series, if it's a self tape, okay. if it's you know a great film or you know TV show that's been on the air for ten years. Whatever it is, it helps me to know more about that actor than I do just looking at their picture. Mm -hmm. um, so I, anything that provide allows you to have that kind of content to share mm -hmm. is a good thing. That's yeah. great. So to keep working, to keep um, honing your craft, to keep making choices and bringing in strong choices into the room when, when you have the op uh, opportunity to audition. And I would imagine too, I mean, working on your memorization so that you know, you, when you get something that's a quick turnaround, because when you were looking at, you know, when talking about day players coming in, how much time do they usually have um, before well, their audition yeah. appointments? The I mean, the smaller the role, the, the less time. Often, mm -hmm. we, we try to be nice about not giving huge amounts of material overnight. If it's a line or two, mm -hmm. we don't feel so bad about asking people to come the next day. Um, but that you don't have the luxury of that kind of time. And sometimes it's a couple pages, and it's for tomorrow, and it yeah. sucks. But yeah. it's got to be it's got to yeah. be done, and somebody's going to get the part right. with the same 24 hours preparation that you had. So. Right, and just staying active, just staying involved in things and in your craft so that you're just ready to go when the opportunity you know, comes up. Yeah. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about what you're working on now? Or what you can say about what yeah, you're working on now? Um, we're working on a, a series for Netflix. It's a comedy, so it's a very different world than this exists in, mm -hmm. um, which is fun and flexes different muscles for us. Um, mm -hmm. And then we've got a film starting in the new year, mm -hmm. um, which will be tonally, I think, more, more similar to the world that the Americans lives in. Very mm -hmm. naturalistic, um, period, though period not quite piece. as period yeah. as the Americans. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. And so you're working and then, so right now it's November, and so that starts at the beginning of, of the year, so you have, yeah. how much prep time do you get with, with a film? The film will be a couple, like two to three months mm -hmm. of prep. Um, the TV show has been shooting. It's kind of an unusual. They're shooting eight episodes cross-boarded as, like, as if it's a film. Mm -hmm. So we're not shooting individual episodes. Mm. We're shooting eight episodes boarded out over three months um, or four months, which has been different. Um, and How is that for you? It It's interesting because what ended up happening is, like the Americans, it front-loaded a lot of the work. Mm. So we cast a lot of it early just by mm -hmm. because of the way the schedule was built yeah. um, and now it's kind of a few roles here a few roles there kind of getting us through to the end mm -hmm. um, but there's a it, it's harder because there are no prep periods now we're just shooting right. it's harder for us because mm. it's the the team is head down in the work um, and what the nice thing about a normal prep schedule is you know you've got eight days of kind of your breathing and we've got one side of the team that's that's working, looking ahead to the next episode, and then one team that's in the episode, mm -hmm. um, and we don't have that on this. This More is just like everybody's in it. Schedule so. and routine that you have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just for everybody, can you talk a little bit about cross-boarding, just because it's a term that's, you know, 
people, you hear it, but just to make sure, sure that everyone knows what it is? Yeah, um, I mean, crossboarding would be two episodes that are either overlapping each other to a varying degree. Some shows on Americans, we would crossboard just one day per episode. So we would shoot days one through nine, and then on day nine, we would work episode one, 601 and episode 602. So we would have two teams shooting two different episodes uh, on that same day, and then the next episode would keep going, and then we would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. On a bigger crossboard, uh, sometimes you're shooting block schedules and you're shooting two episodes at the same time. In this particular case, we're shooting eight episodes at the same time, all the time, um, which is, it works out really nicely for the actors sometimes, mm -hmm. because they might have all their work, if their locations are convenient, they mm. might, and all their work is at one office, instead of coming back one day every eight days to shoot at, at the office, they are shooting eight episodes worth of material in two back-to-back -back days, getting paid for eight episodes, and they mm. only have to work two days, and <laughs> they're done. Yeah. Um, so sometimes it's like, great. Yeah. And then sometimes it gets wonky, and you know, an actor needs to be available for two days, and you know, November, and then not we don't see them again until two days in January, and mm -hmm. don't change anything about your appearance between now and then. Right. So, <laughs> yeah, and a little bit more yeah. like a film where you're jumping out of time that yeah. it's not going to be continuous. I think it's a little harder continuity-wise for the actor to stay mm -hmm. in it. Together. You know, you're shooting. You might be shooting interior of the car of you know scene the scene from 101 on you know September 15th, and then you come back January 15th and you're shooting the exterior when you get out of the car and you got to get yourself back in like the where you were and how you yeah. felt and yeah. you know wh what you're doing as you get out of the car and I, that seems really kind of like a mind game so and I'm also interested like what is your relationship with the directors that you work with because for instance coming up well on a television show the directors can change yeah. mm -hmm. as you go per episode um, and then also like with your film that's coming up um, can you just talk a little bit about your relationship with your with the directors that you work with yeah um, well, on the Americans we did mostly it would be one ep you know different director for every episode or every two episodes, sometimes if we were shooting two at a time, that same director would helm both episodes that we were shooting simultaneously, and then move on, to the, then we would have another director. We had one a, of our producers. One of our, yeah. our directing producer, Chris Long, um, was sort of the, the person who creatively had his eyes on set all day, every day, for the continuity of, of the storytelling from the director's perspective mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and then he would work with the individual director who was brought in for any given episode that Chris wasn't directing. Um, and a lot of, on the Americans, we had a lot of directors that came back season after season, so we kind of had specific, you know, them, creative yeah. relationships with them, mm -hmm. um, which is a nice thing to have that and not yeah. be, you know, have, it would be people that we already knew and, mm -hmm. and knew their sensi sensibility and mm -hmm. um, how they like to work. Um, on a film, it, you know, it takes time to kind of build that rapport, um, it, but you've got a longer prep period to build it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and figure out what works and what the process is gonna be. Every director's different, every TV director's different. Some wanna be in the room for everything and, and mm -hmm. they want to read every role live. Some are happy to do everything from tape. Some film directors I've worked with have no interest in, in pre like pre-reading or doing callbacks. They trust you know what they see on the tape. That mm -hmm. is enough for them to make their decisions. Um, and uh, some want to be in the room for every role down to the non-speaking roles that are, that are being cast as principals. Mm -hmm. So you have to be pretty um, flexible and able to adapt to oh, the yeah. style of the Definitely. person that, yeah. that you're going to be working yeah. with. And then also for you, you know, to find the people that are going to be the right fit for those roles, those types of roles, the tone. Um, and like we talked about earlier, you know, if it's a period piece, that's someone that fits that that idea. Yeah, yeah. And some actors, you know, are going to drop right into something, period, and, and they're kind of built for it. Mm -hmm. And others are better at things that are a more modern sensibility. And, mm -hmm. you know, younger actors especially, I think, um, have to, some have to work a little bit harder to kind of drop into a, a different period because obviously it's like outside their knowledge zone yeah. um, so 
but some people just have the face for it, and yeah. it's kind of a mm, funny thing. The look, yeah. 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 yeah, that's really interesting. Well, we're going to wrap up now. I, I would like to um, give everyone an opportunity to thank you because we so appreciate you giving us the insights and also to celebrate the Americans um, because what a wonderful show. It really has... We miss it. I bet. Terribly. <laughs> yeah. Especially watching it I back. Know, we're yeah. like, so sentimental. Aww. We miss it so much. Well, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it.